So I want to show you a demo of the cycle count in an RFID environment. In this store, we are in our showroom in Boca. We have two types of tags. We have one-time use swing tickets, which are basically paper tags that get encoded at a service bureau. That is the same paper tag that would be used in retail. Um, basically, it's the same price tag that is used with the same barcode information, the same price information, all the details that the typical tag would have, but it has an RFID inlay in it. That allows it to be read with an RFID handheld device. Also in the showroom, we have dual technology tags. A dual technology tag is basically a hard tag that combines the EAS component to set the EAS system off at the exit, but it also has an RFID inlay, which basically allows the system at the exit to read the information of the tag that's being removed from the store and allow to know what information that is. This is what that tag looks like. You have the EAS component, and then there's the RFID inlay, a little bit difficult to see on that camera, but it's basically just wanna show what that looks like. Once you have merchandise tagged with an RFID tag, be it a one-time use or a dual technology, then you could do a cycle count with one of these devices. This is a RFID handheld reader. This is a sled device. And within it, we use a iOS device, which basically uses our TrueView software, which you could see on your screen there on the left-hand side. That is a TrueView mobile software. And as you can see by the different use cases that are on that screen, there's multiple functionalities that this device can be used for. Obviously, for doing cycle counts for inventory, it could be used to find misplaced products within the store. It could be used to receive merchandise, to transfer merchandise, to write tags, um, to basically look at reports. But what I want to demo right now is how to do an actual cycle count with one of these devices. Now, just to preface things here, this is our showroom. Obviously, it's small relatively to a real retail environment. We have about 500 items in the store. About 300 of them have some type of RFID tag, be it a one-time use tag or a dual technology tag. I'm going to do a cycle count using our handheld reader. This device, basically, as I said, it's running our TrueView mobile application. And to do a, a cycle count in our store environment, I have to tap on full count. That is my top option on my TrueView mobile. So I'm gonna tap on that. It's gonna take me to the next screen, which is asking me, where do I want to do a cycle count? Either the sales floor or the stock room. Typically in a retail environment, you have those two environments are the most common. Basically the stock room and the sales floor, and they're typically divided by a wall, which has to be shielded in order to prevent counting what's in the back room when you're counting in the sales floor and vice versa, because you want to keep those inventory um, sections separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on a pale sales floor because that's where we're standing. That's where we want to do the cycle count. And now it's gonna take me to the next screen. And now I'm ready to pull the trigger and start counting. Now, obviously that zero means that I have not started the count, but before I do start the count, I want you to look at the right bottom right-hand side. It says expected quantity. That is the target that I'm going to be looking for as an end user. That means that According to my system of record, the last time that my inventory was read and adjusted by obviously all the receives and the POS sales, says that I'm supposed to have 317 items in stock, and that's what I'm going to look for. Now, I'm going to pull the trigger, and I'm just going to walk away. Remember, this is RFID, so there's no need to actually touch the merchandise. There's no need to actually be seeing it. Everything is from proximity, and as soon as I pull the trigger, I'll be able to start that count. So here just with a few steps and, and within a few seconds, notice that I'm past my 200 mark. I'm looking for 300, which is what I mentioned I had. So I just have to walk around casually and basically start reading. This is very quick, as you can notice, um, this, could, this device could read about 15,000 tags per hour. Multiple users can do a cycle count simultaneously without double reading. And one of the advantages of the RFID tags is that they are all serialized. So even if I go back, if I don't remember if I read a specific area and I go back, I'm not gonna double count because every tag is serialized. So two shirts that are the same style, color, um, skew, 
I'm not going to double read them. They're going to be able to identify one shirt from the other because of the serialization that the tags have. Now, notice that I'm at 291. I am looking for 317, and I am at 87%. Now, every store, they're not going to go for the 100% because there are things that happen that affect the inventory from one cycle count to the other. Um, and the more time that is left in between, obviously, the more that can be affected. So typically, stores do a cycle count once a week. And during that period, obviously, there could be merchandise that is stolen that gets removed from the store without knowledge, uh, merchandise that gets damaged and gets sent back to the back room. All those affect the inventory in the retail store level. So that 80%, stores are going to have a target, which is going to be either 95%, 97%. It's never going to be 100%. But one of the other benefits of doing cycle count is to reduce the labor at the store level. So instead of me having to walk the entire store again, the system is going to tell me where are those remaining percentage that I am missing. So if I went to the next screen, when, what I did was I clicked, I tapped on next, it's gonna tell me the actual departments that I'm missing the items. So here you can see I have men's, a few, I have women's as well as some in uh, apparel denim. So basically it's telling me what part of the store I'm missing these items, so instead of me having to walk the entire store again, I could just walk to those section. I could drill down a little bit more on that. So if I go to men, I could look that uh, I'm missing some shorts, I'm missing some jeans, some shirts, and I know that, obviously working in the store, I know that those shirts are over there back, and I have not walked there. So that that's why I have not read these. But basically the idea here is to give some direction to the end user when they're getting to that final cycle count, to that final percentage, to avoid wasting time and having to walk the entire store again and just give them a direction to where they go. So that is a quick sample of what cycle count is. Now that would be the way I would create or uh, uh, generate a full cycle count for the entire sales flow. Now let me back out of this. I want, I'm gonna cancel this, I'm not gonna save it. Um, and I wanna show you how a smart count would do. So in case, in between cycle counts, say that the store decides that they want to do cycle counts once a week, and in between that week, they just want to spot check specific areas, that is possible as well. Notice that when I did a full count, as soon as I pull the trigger, it's reading everything within the area. So it, uh, depending on the size of the tag, you're going to have a specific range with the tags that we're using in the store and this handheld device, we're getting about six to 10 feet uh, distance read from this. Now, which makes it difficult if a retailer wants to read a specific area. So if they want to just spot check the jeans or they want to spot check shoes or t-shirts or a specific brand, it makes it difficult to just go to that area and read it because it's going to read everything around. So for that types of uh, use cases, we have what is called smart count. Smart count is, gives the user the ability of counting a specific category within the hierarchy of the system to count to do spot checks at a specific area. So I'm gonna tap on smart count here. And again, I'm gonna select the apparel sales floor, which is where we're standing. And as far as the categories, I'm gonna choose accessories because that's what I want to spot check today. So I'm gonna to tap on next because I'm all set there. And as soon as I get to that screen, it's going to bring up the same screen I bought before, but notice on the bottom right-hand side, my expected quantity is much smaller because on my accessories, I only have 11 items in stock in my system of records. So now when I do the trigger, when I pull my trigger around the accessories area, it's only gonna count the items that are within accessories. Notice that I'm, last time when I was around this area, it had counted about 200 and something items within a few steps and a few seconds. Now it's only counting 10 items. I actually found my actual, all of the 11. So basically it filters out everything else. So that gives the end user and the retail store to be able to do spot checks in between full cycle counts to basically um, address any uh, inventory situations of items that have high demand in the store. And again here, uh, the, the next step would be to save that uh, cycle count. And uh, I could do that basically by creating a submit, understanding the changes and save that. I'm not gonna save that. I'm just gonna back out and I'm gonna show you a